Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another watercolor video for you. Today I thought I would show you how to create this really cool Mother's Day heart using some art impression stamps as well as some Gina K products. So I wanted to get make a Mother's Day card for my mom and I've been doing this frame series and it just came out so perfect that I wanted to give it to her. So first I just took my die, my heart die, and I traced around it so I would have a guideline of where to go with my with my bouquet and then how I wanted to get it all laid out. So I just wanted a guideline there. So I took my daisy bunch and I'm gonna ink it up with some iris purple, which is actually more like a pink, but it's a beautiful color. And I'm inking the entire stamp up because I want it to be a pretty big bloom. So I'm going to stamp this on the left hand side of the heart and I'm going to go in a circle and I'm going to do it in a pretty wide circle because I want it to be a pretty big bloom. I'm going to do the same thing on the right hand side a little bit higher and create another bloom as well. So now you see me I'm only inking up a little bit of the stamp a few of the of the flowers because I wanted a smaller bloom so I'm just taking that and doing the same thing just stamping it in a circle four or five times just to get a, a variation in color. So I'm taking my brush and I'm pinching off the water. You can see here as I'm working it's there's definitely not enough water to create the effect so I dip my brush again and pinched it off and then I'm coming in here which seems to be a little bit better. It's always better to start with not enough water than too much water because you don't want, if you put a big blob of water in the middle of your bloom, then you'll either end up restamping it or having to start over or unless you like that effect and then that's fine. But I always try to, when I'm first painting, I try to get my brush really wet and then pull off the, the water and try it out before and if I need a little bit more, I'll add a little bit more. And then I'm just adding some of that, some of that water to that bloom up in the left hand corner. And I think I still decided this one wasn't watercolory enough for me. So I added a little bit more water to that one and then I'll add a little more to this one as well. So for the next one we're going to be taking this little bloom here, this little flower. I believe this is from one of the newer sets. All the products will be listed below in case I screw them up and don't tell you the right product. And I'm going to use some violet to ink up the blooms and some olive green to do the stems. So first I was just going to do this top, then I decided to go down a little bit more, then I decided to go the whole way. I was going to stamp a big blue, a big stem, and then I changed my mind and ended up rubbing part of that off. And then I just kind of stamped it three times. As you saw I went from the right, I stamped it, and then I stamped it to the left and then above. That's going to give you your variety of color and that's going to, what's going to give your, bring your paintings to life. So I'm inking this up again and I'm going to do the same thing and stamp it right below that, the other one. and then just two or three times. Same thing, I noticed as I was putting the, the water down I had a little too much so I stopped and pinched it off again. And then I'm just adding color to these blooms. Or adding water, not color. Adding water to the blooms. Now you see I'm going to come in here. This step is not necessary, especially because, well I didn't know where this was going, but usually you don't need to touch these, you don't need to touch the stems. I always like to do a little bit just so that I can get a really watercolor look and they're not so stark, but it's not something you need to do and as you see as we go along, I'm going to actually cover those up so you're not going to see them anyway. But this is the part where you're not knowing, you don't know the future and it just kind of comes to the way it comes and you just got to roll with punches. 
So now I'm going to use this leaf from one of the sets. I'm not really sure which set. Like I said, below will be all the supplies. But this is a different kind of leaf. It's not the vine I usually use. So this leaf is like, circ they're like little circular leaves and they just give a different design. Sometimes I try to think outside of the box and grab things that I'm not usually, that I don't usually grab because if I use, start using more of my stamps, then I'll get used to using them and how they work and then I'll use them more often. Otherwise you tend to grab the same stamps every time and I didn't want to get into that pattern of not using all of my stamps. So this, this particular leaf has a left and a right. So I'm inking up the one that is to the left and then I'm going to switch and add the one to the right and I'm going to ink that up and use that on the right hand side. These are perfect because they do tend to go a certain way so when you have a left and a right it just makes it so much easier. You see I'm, I'm going right over those stems so you can't even see them anymore. And then I'm just putting a few at the bottom to give it a little more, a little more body at the bottom. So now I'm coming in here with my water and I'm just going to soften out those lines, soften out uh, those leaves. And as usual, I usually see I'm, I'm touching the, the light ones first and then I'm coming in working my way into the dark leaves. just creating a little bit of interest at the bottom so it looks like it's fading out and then I'll touch these little these little leaves here that are very they're very light and then all the ones in between you can still see those purple flowers you can still see those stems so I'm not sure that I even needed to bother putting any, any water onto them. I wasn't too sure if I was going to like the way this card came out and in the end I ended up really liking it. This is going to be actually my mother's Mother's Day card. And then I have a few to send to some friends. And then I'm just going to finish up by just finishing these little leaves up and and that'll be it. I love how that little one on the left, the top left, the small one looks like a little bloom just stuck in there. So now I'm going to take my olive green and I'm going to use the fine point of that marker and I'm just going to freehand in just some some foliage and it's really just a couple of lines. I had seen this either in a book or on or on Pinterest or somewhere and I just thought it looked really cool to give them a little bit of of these leaves that are sort of coming out. And of course I'm doing it in an odd number because as I said you want to do everything in an odd number of like an odd number of elements, an odd number of colors and like three blooms versus four blooms. So I did, I think I did five of these little whimsical leaf, leaf things. It's a technical term, I know. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move on to the frame. And I know if you've seen any of my other frame series, I will tell you not to use the side of the marker. I must have done that those after I already did this because I've had the this video done for a while I just haven't put it together so I used the the larger side but I also wanted this frame to the color to come all the way into the frame not just on the edges so it does take a little bit more time to blend out 
but I also wanted more color, so it didn't end up being any more work for me. I put some of this brownish, this brownish, this brownish gray color on my palette, and I start out by just taking some clean water and going around the edge and softening out that line. You see, I do put some color on my brush at some points, and that's just to help me blend out and then bring that color into where that flower arrangement is. I sped this up a little. I know you guys say you like things in real time. This is just way too tedious to make you watch. I was it was killing me to do the voiceover, and I said, no, I need to, I need to definitely speed this part up. It's the same process that I've done in the other videos. And you can still see a lot of it in this video. It's just I didn't want you to have to sit through that. So I'm pulling a little bit of color in underneath that, underneath that flower arrangement and then softening all of those hard edges out. I wanted to get a really nice blend. So as I go, as I create this, it'll, it'll make the paper wet. So when the paper is a little bit wet, it's a lot easier to blend. So you'll notice that I'm just coming in here and dropping more color in and it, it'll blend out a lot easier that way. You'll more see the sheen of water on the other side when I do the other side because of the way the light and the camera hits. So you'll be able to see how that, how that definitely um, stays, stays wet. So you want to make sure you're using a good a good paper here because if you're using a paper that is going to pill up then you're not going to be able to achieve what you want to achieve with all the water because it, the paper won't be able to handle it. And you see how I I tape down my projects and I don't necessarily do that because of the war warping because with using art impression stamps there's not a whole bunch of water, so you're not getting a whole bunch of warping as you're doing your projects, unless you're doing a background like this. So it's not really usually an issue. I usually use the tape just so that I don't, when I'm filming, that I don't go off camera and I don't have to think about it, and it's just easier for me as far as editing purposes go. So I tend to just tape it down so that I can work on it, but if I wasn't filming it, it wouldn't be taped down. Now I'm just adding some more color to those edges. You want the edges to be really dark and as it comes into the middle you still want that dark to light even though those flowers are in the middle there. You could add some shading underneath those petals. I try to steer as clear as I can from them because I don't want adding more water to them will reactivate the marker and it will smudge your work. So I try to be very careful to just go around the flowers and not necessarily as close as you can get to them. So now I'm just going to clean up just a little bit of the sides that I got out of the lines and that's it. I did not sign and date this until after because I forgot, but this is pretty much the full card. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your, you guys always sticking out there with me, and I hope to see you again soon. If you want to see more videos, please hit that subscribe button, and I've linked a couple more videos for you in case you want to check out more of this frame series. Thank you so much, and have a great day.